what's up it's nathan reed and i'm gonna be hitting you guys with another tutorial on davinci resolve um this one's gonna be on like pan cropping and like how i do transforms um so yeah i kind of have two different clips here there's there's like two different kind of pan crops that i like to do the first one is like one where it kind of zooms in and then quickly zooms out like uh like this where it's like boom it kind of like hits it and then the second one is one where I either kind of like do a smooth zoom in like that or a smooth zoom out like that. Um, so yeah, for the first one, um, you're just gonna go ahead into Fusion and then hit uh, Command Space or Control Space uh, to bring up this node search. And I already typed it in actually, but you type in Transform and hit the Transform XF right here add the two main controls are going to be size and uh, angle is just that's just like rotation basically um so go to the frame you want to kind of hit which is probably at a kill um so that's right there and then basically just keyframe these to uh like the max rotation and zoom oh wait uh aspect angle uh, max rotation and zoom that you kind of want it to be hitting at and then also make sure your edges are mirror that's probably the best option um, and I, I don't usually like to do a lot of rotation it just just a, a little bit goes a long way with that um, but yeah just keyframe this and go back like a few frames maybe maybe about there and then just keyframe but both those again and reset them. So I just said zero for both. And then go forward like more than, like go forward a little bit more than, uh, than the space between the first two keyframes. And just do the same thing. Um, so right now, obviously it looks pretty linear. Like that doesn't look good. That doesn't look exciting. Um, so just, yeah, go on spline. This is like the graph editor. Um, check all these to show your keyframes. And then basically for the, um, what you want to do for the graphs here is you can click the key points and kind of make them sloped up like that. And you kind of just, for, for this one anyways, you just want it to kind of be like a sharp point at the top and then actually I'm gonna do these individually so I can see it better um, but yeah you kind of just want it to be like a short spike at the top and then it like quickly zooms out so it's like and it, we haven't done that rotation yet so it still looks kind of weird but like I'm actually gonna move this forward a little bit gonna do the same thing with the uh, rotation kind of make it like a sharp point and when you're grabbing these ones like a lot of time you'll kind of grab it and it moves both of them you can hold control or command uh, depending on if you're Mac or Windows and grab the point and it'll just rotate that one individually um, so yeah just mess with these curves until it kind of resembles a point like that yeah, actually, I don't like this. I want it to be like a lot shorter. So I'm just gonna scooch these keyframes over. Uh, down. Yeah, that ain't looking too bad. Watch this. Uh, down. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that kind of looks nice once you add a lot of like glitches and like glows and effects and I'm just gonna actually you know I'll just do a colors corrector for the sake of it keyframe like a little glow effect bonus tutorial for you guys 
you, you always want to mess with the gain. Don't do gamma or brightness or anything. Gain is the way to go. actually I'm going to still make these a little bit shorter and sharper yeah that looks nice um, yeah then once you're done with all that you kind of uh, you can add uh, motion blur which is oh wait what am I doing uh, optical flow and then vector motion blur to make it look nice and motion blurry and I usually put this at 0.5 because the clips usually end up at 30 frames per second so it doesn't really look good to have like a bunch of motion blur so yeah that's all pre-rendered at here's what it looks like watch this Go. That, that looks pretty fresh, if I don't say so myself. Watch this. Down you go. Yeah, that's nice looking actually. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Alright, I'm just going to get started on the uh, second clip now. And I think I want to do the zoom in effect like right about uh, right here. Right there. So yeah, same thing, just add the transform XF and this one's a little bit different because you kind of have to estimate where you want the zoom in to start and end. So that's a little bit of trial and error, but I think I want it to start around like... Uh, good um, so same thing keyframe the size you can do angle if you want but I don't think I want to do it for this one um, and then you actually want to end it like a little bit after your uh, impact moment because basically the moment of impact or like the kit this kill for example um, is basically where the zooming is going to be the fastest but it's going to be zooming the same direction the whole time so like instead of kind of like going in and out like that it's just going to be like like that so basically then what you want to do is once you have those keyframes go to the second one and kind of go uh, adjust these uh, adjust the size and angle if you want to or actually, just adjust the size to the maximum um, zoom that you want. And then, actually, I think I am going to do angle because uh, I, I wouldn't usually use it here, but just to show you guys how it's done. Uh, so here, I'll add these keyframes for rotation there. right there okay and then yeah so on the second keyframe you want to increase the size but don't mess with the um, rotation at all um, and then right about here on like the frame that you want it to kind of be like the impact frame um, you want to turn the angle like sideways like not too much. Again, a uh, little goes a long way here. Change the edges to mirror. And then 
basically the angle is going to be like going in and out but then the size is just going to be only going in if that makes sense so oh wait what oh wait i, I, I see the key from there and then again you want to put a keyframe for size on the moment of impact so now that you have all these keyframes set up you can go into the graph editor and your angle should kind of look like this it kind of rotates and then rotates back to being straight and this part is the same as the uh, previous clip where you kind of just make it like a spike looking thingy like like that I'm actually gonna make this a lot sharper to be like the steepest part basically this middle keyframe right here so you want to make that really steep and then make the rest of it like smoothed out all flattened out so it should kind of look like this and actually i'm not messing with this at all like this looks like garbage again just adjust it until you think it looks good like there's no formula or like secret sauce or anything trial and error um, so yeah I'm just gonna keep messing with this angle a little bit and sometimes sometimes if there's like a zoom in and then a zoom out right after that I'll have the angle go in and out like the same way the zooming does so like like that and then i'll have another one going like later going out like going back down um but just for this one i'm only doing a zoom in so i'm gonna have it looking like this uh, this, this looks okay And sometimes I add like a really slight camera shake here too, just to kind of give it that like shaky camera effect. <laughs> yeah, that don't look too bad. And again, just here I'll do another uh, motion blur and color correction just to make it look nice. Or not color correction, like you know the glow effect. So this is all rendered out, and uh, this is basically what it looks like. That looks pretty nice. It actually looks so nice with the motion blur. Um, but yeah, um, that's basically the two types of paint crops that I like to do. 
Uh, this first one, like, I would usually use that in the context of, like, something that I want to be, like, a really high-impact moment, because I don't really do, like, a lot of pan crops, but, like, this one would kind of be, like, at a important moment in the edit. Um, and then the second one, I, sometimes I like to pair this with, like, kind of like a zoom in and then a zoom out. And I usually use those on like clips that are at full speed, so there's like no time remapping on them. Um, kind of like just like spray down clips, like if it's like a like a fast multi kill. Um, either that or like clips that don't have a lot of motion, and I kind of want to like add motion to the clip. Um, then I'll just do like a kind of like a zoom in thingy like this. Like that just yeah, it just looks nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's how you do pan crops, and also make sure that in the effects chain, it's like, you want it to be after time remapping, so like if I had time remapping on these clips, I would put it before the, uh, I would put it before the transform, um, because if you do it after, then it's, it'll, the time stretcher will like affect the transform, and you don't want that, um, so you want it after the time stretcher and before the motion blur because you also want the motion blur to affect the, um, the transformations that you're doing um, so like it'll kind of like if, it, if you're zooming in the motion blur will kind of like automatically add like zoom blur on those parts um, and it just makes it more like realistic and like believable uh, almost like someone's actually holding the camera or something like that um, <clears throat> But yeah, that's basically just how you do pan crops. Um, the last step of the process is to just render it out in like the widest aspect ratio you can possibly fit. And uh, just slap some drum and bass on there and you're chilling. Watch this.